Food Preservation Basics, Jams and Jellies, presented by Susan Hill, Alabama Cooperative Extension System, Food Safety and Quality Agent. When beginning food preservation basics and making jams and jellies, only use USDA approved recipes and procedures. You can find these at the National Center of Home Food Preservation at nchfp.uga.edu. Also, you can visit any state extension website to find these canning recipes. So when you're preparing jams and jellies, you need to decide which one are you going to prepare, a jam, a preserve, a jelly, and one question you'll ask yourself is what's the difference? Jelly is made with juice. It is translucent and is firm enough to hold its shape. Jam, it is made with crushed or chopped fruit. It's going to be a little cloudy and softer than the jelly. The next choice for jams and jellies could be preserves. Preserves made with crushed and sliced or whole fruit, it is chunky with pieces of fruit. Marmalade is another choice. It is made with citrus. It is jelly with visible pieces of fruit peel and rind. I really can't choose a favorite. Conserves, they're next on the list and they contain spices or liquor and it is jam made with dried fruits and or nuts. There are several recipes that you can choose from. Another choice, chutney, is made with fruit or vegetables, vinegar and spices. It's flavorful, sweet, and it can be tangy, like a tangy jam. Fruit butter, my favorite, it's really not a butter. It is made with pureed fruit. Its consistency is smooth and thick, and the spice is just right. Then there's fruit curd. It is made with egg, juice, and butter, and its consistency is thick and creamy. Then you have the choice of fruit spreads, which is the term for anything that has fruit in it and it spreads on toast, on a biscuit, anything of that nature. Then you have fruit honey or syrup. It is fruit, syrup, and honey or sugar, and its consistency is sticky and thick. The equipment you will need for jams and jellies will be the water bath canner with a rack, a jar funnel, jar lifter, magnetic lid wand, bubble freer, hot pads, and a timer. When preparing jams and jellies, there are four essential ingredients that you'll need. Fruit, pectin, acid, and sugar, and we will discuss all four. The first essential ingredient for jams and jellies are going to be fruits. The fruit gives your jams and jellies their special flavor. The flavor that comes from any of the fruit juices will supply pectin needed for a successful gel or a successful jam or jelly. You want to choose fresh ripe fruits because you'll have the best flavor. Using an older or stale fruit will alter the flavor. Again, a fresh fruit will supply pectin for thickening for a successful jam or jelly. Another essential ingredient for jams and jellies will be pectin. Pectin is responsible for gel formation in the jam or the jelly. Pectin is the gum in the wall of the plant cell responsible for this. Some fruits such as apples are sufficient in natural pectin and may not need an additional amount of pectin such as a commercial pectin. Some fruits are inefficient such as strawberries and will need a commercial pectin when making a jam or jelly from this fruit. Commercial or store pectin can be purchased in liquid or powder form, and it is best to go by your instructions to choose which is going to be the best for your project. The next essential ingredient for jams and jellies will be acid. Acid is needed for flavor and gel formation. A proper level of acidity is critical to this gel formation. If there's too little acid, the gel will never set. If there's too much acid, the gel will lose flavor and will weep. Fruits that are low in acid add lemon juice or other acid ingredients as directed. Commercial pectin may also be an acid that will help ensure your gel. Remember, underripe fruits are higher in acid, overripe fruits are lower in acid. Again, please be efficient and read your recipe. The last essential ingredient for jams and jellies will be sugar. 
Sugar adds flavor and assists in the gel process. It also acts as a preserver. When preparing your jam or your jelly, do not alter the sugar that is called for in the recipe. You will not have a good gel for your jam or your jelly and it will alter the taste. Corn syrup or honey can replace half of the sugar in a recipe. When doing this, use a light colored, mild flavor honey so it will not overpower your fruit flavor. Now that you have all of your ingredients together and your equipment, it is time to prepare your jars. Use only standard canning jars. These will be Mason, Ball, Kerr, and the manufacturer's name will be on the side. The preferred size for jams or jellies will be a half pint size jar. Check the rims of your jars for nicks, cuts, cracks, and if this occurs, you need to discard this jar. Also, check your jar rings for rust. If there is rust, you also need to discard this ring. Wash and sterilize your jars in warm soapy water. Sterilization can occur in your dishwasher. Only place the jars in the dishwasher and also use two-piece lids. This is going to ensure a better seal for your product. Now that you've prepared your jars, it is time to prepare your water bath canner. Your water bath canner needs to be prepared before you prepare your jam or your jelly. Fill your water bath canner three-fourths of the way full. The reason for this is when you put your jars of product into the water bath canner, they will be covered with water one to two inches above the jar. The water should not be boiling when you place the jam or jelly jar into the canner. The reason for this is you do not want any breakage to lose your product. At this point, you have your jars prepared and your water bath canner prepared as well. Now it's time to start making the product. You want to wash and prepare your fruits, cut them into pieces, or crush the smaller fruit. It is all according to your recipe. Cook your fruit in a large stock pot until it is soft. Strain the cooked fruit for juice, or it may be for a jam or preserve. It's all according to your recipe. Add your pectin according to your recipe as well. At this point, you prepare your jars for filling. Next, you want to add your sugar, bring your mixture to a rolling bowl, stir the mixture until the sugar is dissolved, and then skim the film or bubbles off the top of the jelly. Once you have skimmed the bubbles or the film off the top of your jelly mixture or your jam mixture, ladle the fruit liquid into a half pint jar. Clean the jar tops with a paper towel to move any debris so the seal will be good. Place a lid or a tip atop. Place the rings on the jar fingertip tight. Using your jar lifter, place the filled jars into the water bath canner, placing them on the wire rack. Now that your jars are filled and in the water bath canner, place the lid on the water bath canner. Start your processing time when the water begins to boil. Process the jam or jelly according to your recipe or 10 minutes. Now that your product has processed for the 10 minutes, use a jar lifter to remove the jars from the water bath canner. Do not tilt the jars because this will add excess water into the jam or the jelly. Place your hot jars of jam or jelly on a cloth towel prepared on the counter. Allow jars of jams or jelly to sit 12 hours. Jars will pop or seal preserving the jam or the jelly. The jars of jelly will have a shelf life of 12 months. For more information on jams and jellies, preserves, and other food preservation information, please contact the Alabama Cooperative Extension System Food Safety and Quality Team Agent, or you can see us on www.aces.edu.